Hello, this is Mr. Craig, and I want to talk about the review sheet from day 107. Um, the first question uh, says, answer the following questions related to the kinetics of a chemical reaction. Notice that we have a balanced equation here, and the one thing that I want you to realize is that we really do not care what the coefficients are in the balanced equation. Um, if both the, nit the nitrogen monoxide and the hydrogen gas happen to be second order, that is strictly coincidence. So again, oftentimes we don't really care about the balanced equation. Um, so let's get right to the question. Experiments were conducted to study the rate of reaction represented by the equation above uh, initial concentrations and rates of reactions were listed in the table. Part A asks, determine the order for each of the reactants, NO and H2. So our generic equation looks like this. So again, remember the rate law always includes the word rate, also has uh, the K constant, which we'll calculate at some point, and then the concentration, we don't know what the orders are. Um, in this question, looks like we have concentrations that are identical in both of these columns, so that's good news for uh, a lot of you that really like it when you have concentrations that are equal. In an earlier video, I think I had it where the concentrations were, we had similar concentrations in one column but not in the other column, and that's okay. Algebraically speaking, we can still figure out the orders. So, in this example, it looks like I went ahead and uh, compared the rates of experiment 2 to experiment 1, got a 2. I took the concentrations from those respective experiments, uh, canceled out alike terms, which the constants cancel out, and my concentrations are the same cancel out, and then I have my concentrations which are 0.2 over 0.1, which is equal to 2n. Uh, since our rate was a ratio of 2, n in that case equals 1. So the hydrogen actually has an order of 1. And then I went ahead and checked out experiment 3 to experiment 4, and then compared the rates. And again, this gave me a like concentrations for the hydrogen, which I already know the order for, and I need to find out what the uh, order for the NO actually is. So I compare that and I get 2M, and 2M equals 4. Therefore, remember, for the react a reactant, it can only have an order of 0, 1, or 2. The reaction order can be anything. It can be 1 through, eh, probably won't get above 10. Uh, we won't, oftentimes we won't have too many reactants with um, an order that would go too high. But again, reactant can only have an order of 0, 1, or 2. Reaction, add up all the orders, and that's your reaction order. All right, so we have our orders for each of those, and so right here is our, re our uh, rate law. So write the overall uh, rate law for the reaction. Actually, that was... Oh, determine the order for each. Okay. So we have our orders and our reaction, our rate law. Part B says calculate the value for the rate constant K. Once you have the rate law, you get to pick one of the experiments or one of the trials. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. They'll all give you the same constant since K will be the same throughout the whole problem. So it looks like I'm not sure which one I chose, but came up with 5,000. Now, also be aware of what the units are. Um, and because it will ask you to include the units. So rate is always molarity per unit of time, and in this case it's actually in minutes. Um, so there's our molarity per unit of time. Um, we have the nitrogen monoxide, which is a second order, so that means that we have two molarities right here. And then the hydrogen is a first order, so we actually have molarity cubed on the bottom. We have one molarity on top, so that will reduce down to molarity squared minute. So there's our unit, NRK. Uh, don't freak out if that number is really big or really small. That's just the way K is. Um, part C, actually I want to skip that. You won't see that on the test, and highly unlikely you'll see that on the AP exam. And I know I told a lot of you today in class to do something else. Just disregard Part C. You, won't, you will not see it on the test. I apologize for that incorrect information. However, Part D is a very nice concept. You all should be able to be able to do this. Uh, the following sequence of elementary steps is a proposed mechanism for the reaction, where we have step one, step two, step three. You can look at, take a look at that. Based on the data presented, which of the above is the rate determining step? Now, we calculated our rate law right here. So again, when we determine, if I had on here like slow, fast, fast, or fast, fast, slow, which, wherever, 
you are telling me which of these steps is the slow step. The way to do that, if you knew which one was the slow step, is that you'll consider all the reactants up to and including the slow step minus the intermediates. So make sure for the test you know what reactants are, make sure you know what products are, make sure you know what intermediates are, and also it doesn't hurt to know if there's a catalyst. So again, an intermediate is something that is produced on the product side and then later appears as a reactant. So something that is produced, like for example, N2O2 is produced and then it later appears as a reactant. So in this case, N2O2 is an intermediate, not a reactant, not a product. It is an intermediate. Uh, this problem does not have any catalyst. A catalyst will pretend for a second that NO is an, a reactant and then we would get it back in the same form like NO would be down here. That would be considered a catalyst. We do not have any catalyst in this problem. Alright, so let's get back to the problem. So we determined our rate law to be this. So we have NO, we have two of those, and hydrogen, we have one of those. So let's take a look here. In the first step we have NO plus NO. There's two NOs. That's not bad. Is there a hydrogen in that first step? Because again, we want to include all the reactants up to and including the slow step. No. The first time that we see a hydrogen is actually in the second step. So we have NO, NO, and hydrogen. We already said that the N2O2 was an intermediate. So N2O2 would never ever appear in the rate law. However, if the third step were the slow step, what must the order be for hydrogen? It would have to be second order. Therefore, this is the rate determining step, step two. Again, it has all the reactants, two NOs, plus the hydrogen, minus the intermediates. Okay, so again, we include all the reactants up to and including the slow step minus the intermediates. So step two is your rate determining step. If step three were the rate determining step, hydrogen would be second order. Because again, N2O is an intermediate. I think that's a question that's coming up here. So I put on here step two is a slow step. Um, and again, step one and two include all the reactants within our rate law that we determined. Step three is not the slow step because hydrogen is only first order. That's what this is saying. So again, that would have to be a second order reactant for it to be uh, the slow step. All right, number two, uh, the reaction between NO and hydrogen is believed to occur in the following three steps. This is a brand new problem. Uh, so we have fast, slow, fast. And part A wants you to write the balanced equation for the overall reaction. So when doing the overall reaction, we want to cancel out alike terms that appear on both sides of this problem. Okay, So N2O2, goodbye on both sides here. Let's scoot that up just a little. Um, and the N2O is gone. So once we cancel out alike terms, looks like we have two intermediates here. No catalysts are present. Um, so there's our balanced equation. And again, be sure that when you have a balanced equation that we have the same number of atoms on both sides. And in this case, we do. Part B says to identify the intermediates. Again, intermediates are things that are produced and later appear as a reactant. Now, they do not have intermediates do not have to appear in the next step. They can show up two or three steps later. That's fine, just as long as they come back to us on the reactant side. So there's our reactants. And justifying your answer, um, I think a definition for what an intermediate is. And again, an intermediate is something that's produced and later returns as a reactant. All right, part C. It says, from the mechanism represented above, this right here, all these steps right here, from the mechanism represented above, a student correctly deduces that the rate for the reaction is, is given. So that's what we had as our rate law. The student then concludes that one, the reaction is a third order. Okay, so my question to you is, is the student correct in this first uh, conclusion? Is this reaction a third order reaction based on his or her rate law? And actually this is the same equation. Is this a third order reaction? That's my question. The answer is yes. Remember, reactions are the 
is the addition of all the orders. So NO has a second order, hydrogen has a first order, which is the case down here. Second order plus first order, that is a third order reaction. Make sure you know the difference between orders of a reaction and order of a reactant. Reactant is for each reactant. All right, the second conclusion. Uh, the mechanism involves a simultaneous collision of two NO molecules and a hydrogen molecule. So what this is stating is that we have two NOs colliding with each other and a hydrogen. Well, if you look at the reaction mechanism, what happens is the two NOs collide and form N2O2. Then the N2O2 collides with the hydrogen. So the second deduction or second conclusion is incorrect. There is no way, based on our rate, on our mechanism here, that we have three molecules colliding. Also, I'll give you a heads up. That is extremely rare to have three molecules or three particles collide and form a product. Two, no problem. Three, rare. It's not impossible, but it is extremely difficult. So in this reaction mechanism, the two NOs come together to form N2O2, and then that, that N2O2 particle collides with the hydrogen to make these products. So the second conclusion is incorrect. There is no way, based on our mechanism, that we're going to have a simultaneous collision of two NO molecules and a hydrogen molecule. Okay, and that's what that all says. All right, part D, explain why an increase in temperature increases the rate constant K, uh, given from the rate law. Again, recall that when we look at our rate law, actually I'll do it with this one, rate law, actually I'll move it even farther back. When we look at rate law, okay, here's our rate law right here. If I increase the temperature, what happens to the rate of the reaction? Hopefully you're saying that the rate increases. All right, so once we rearrange the variables here, the constant remains constant as long as the temperature remains constant. If the temperature changes, the constant will change, just like when we did in equilibrium. However, don't confuse equilibrium with kinetics. So we know that the equilibrium, or not the equilibrium, the um, reaction constant will increase because we know the rate will increase. So if the rate increases, that means that the K will increase. That's just a mathematical expression here. This top number goes up, K goes up, period. If the temperature causes the rate to go down, K will go down. Because nothing's going to happen to the concentrations. They're in a container. That container is not changing size. So the concentration remains the same. However, the rate is the variable that changes here. So when that one changes, so does K. All right. I'm trying to remember if that was the last question. Okay. So K will increase because temperature goes up. All right. Oh, here we go. Um, the, the graphs that I want you to know, and you need to know these for the AP exam as well. Um, be sure that you know, and again, don't worry about, that's actually the correct way to label that. Draw the following graphs for each condition. When you have the concentration um, of a substance versus time, and you yield a straight line or a negative slope, you are looking at a zero-order reactant. If you have the concentration versus time, and it gives a nice little uh, deceleration curve here, that could either be first order or second order. Now, it's really difficult if I just gave you that, this set of data right here and said, okay, tell me if that's first order or second order. Eh, that's not a really fair question. However, it could be first or second. Now, I'm taking the same data here and drawing a gr uh, curve here, and that actually represents a second order. So first and second order look very, very similar when you plot concentration versus time. Now, if you are just dying to see this data, I actually have it at this site right here. You can click on it and go to that on the link here. So you have to come to the actual answer page and click on that. Can't click on it on the video, unfortunately. All right. When you take another situation, have the natural log of A versus time, and you yield a negative slope, you are looking at a first order reactant. Okay. If you take the natural log of A versus time and you get a somewhat of a deceleration slope, you know that's not straight. This is a straight line. This is not a straight line. This represents for a second order. 
Okay, I won't even ask you about a zero. Zero we don't care about. Okay, so the negative slope versus time, when you have natural log of A, that represents for a first order reactant. So that goes with that one. Second order, uh, it's kind of a deceleration, but it's it's a little flatter than up here, but it is not a negative slope. That slope changes. All right, now this one, I don't believe I talked about, nor is it that important to worry about, but, oops, let's get rid of that yeah, keyboard. All right, so here, when I take the inverse of the concentration versus time, I kind of get an acceleration curve here. You don't need to know that for the AP exam or for the test. However, if you take the inverse of the concentration versus time and you yield a positive slope, that's second order. So second order, one over the concentration versus time. For, for, for first order, natural log of A versus time, negative slope. For zero order, concentration versus time, negative slope. Make sure that you know those three scenarios. That is imperative. Uh, not going to discuss those. Not going to discuss those, nor that. So you should be able to do the math on those. I hope this video has helped. I really wanted this to be more of a concept type video with the rest of these um, uh, videos for the review because I believe you guys are pretty strong with the math. I hope this video has helped.